CTV News at 6 with Joe Perkins. Good evening. Thank you for being here. It has been three days since the Capital Regional District pulled the curtain back on its plans for a potential biosolids facility in the heart of Esquimalt. Esquimalt says the plan stinks. Homeowners near the proposed site are concerned. Local politicians are furious. And today, as a unified group, opponents told the CRD to take its plan and flush it out. They're cheering, but these are not cheers of joy. Residents of the region have been denied their rights in, in how this process has gone forward. This week, the Capital Regional District announced it's in the process of purchasing this piece of land on Viewfield Road for $17 million. Its plan is to build a biosolids energy centre that would turn sludge into fuel. But Esquimalt is pushing back. Not only not happy with the latest news, but I'm not happy with the entire process. The proposed centre would be located down the street from the region's new wastewater facility, a lot closer than the alternate plan to pipe waste out to the Heartland landfill. But Esquimalt's mayor thinks two facilities in the community could have a devastating impact. And what does it give back? We're not sure. Since the CRD's plan was revealed, opponents have been vocal, but not like this. Members, thank you very this morning at Sachs Point, the first of two rallies scheduled today. You can't just come to this rally. You have to get this message to CRD, to the Core Liquid Waste Management Committee, and to the board members. Hours later, more signs at another Esquimalt Park. More frustration. This episode is the latest example of disregard of public input and needs and wants. We want more transparency and we want more accountability and we're not getting that from the CRD. But what opponents to the plan are getting is growing support. Critics here say opposition is on the rise. This week NDP MP Randall Garrison joined the fight. Today he said he'd take it to Ottawa. We're going to try and get a written guarantee from the federal government that there is no deadline on this funding, so there, it, there's no need for a rush here. We can do this right. Barb Desjardins says she intends to make Esquimalt's fight an election issue. And with the provincial election in May, she has time to rally her troops. Today, that's what she did as Esquimalt began gearing up for a fight that is in the early rounds. Saanich police are investigating an early morning stabbing that's left two people with serious injuries. Just before four, police arrived to this Saanich home where several men were drinking. Police say a dispute erupted and two men ages 31 and 43 were stabbed. Two men in their early 20s were arrested at the scene. Police say the men knew each other and believe alcohol was a factor. What was described uh, by some of the initial officers that it, it was uh, truly a, a brouhaha in the sense that uh, there were multiple people involved. Uh, there were witnesses, suspects, and uh, victims alike, and uh, all of them, all of them, had been involved to some degree or another. And in fact, multiple people ended up uh, sustaining some injuries. Thankfully, only uh, a couple of them were truly uh, more serious and were actually taken to hospital. Police spent the day at the home. Saanich Police, major crimes detectives, as well as forensic investigators are helping with the investigation. Well, how about this for an accident? This afternoon, a truck being serviced in a driveway along Darwin Avenue in Saanich accidentally came loose from its wheel chocks, rolling right over the side of this concrete wall onto a PT Cruiser. And the damage wasn't done there. The guardrail also came loose, landing on a Jaguar that managed to bypass the fallen truck. Neighbors in the area say they were shocked. A neighbor came and knocked on my door and told me, and I, I couldn't figure out how a car could be on top of my car, you know? It just didn't make sense to me, and I thought, well, i got to go see this. I was sitting in my house, and I heard the sound of it out the window, so I took a look, and I saw the truck come down. Obviously, I felt pretty nervous that someone had been hurt. Thankfully, that was not the case. A towing company was called to deal with what police are calling a complex recovery. Luckily, no one was in any of the vehicles. The province's pipeline debate is getting some extra attention tonight, courtesy of a controversial video game from Ontario. The game is called Pipe Trouble. TV Ontario, the province's public broadcaster, used taxpayer money to create the game, which shows gas pipelines being bombed. The game was intended to accompany a documentary about BC's pipeline controversy. Critics, including Christy Clark, have slammed the game, especially its introductory video, which appears to show activists protesting before a pipeline eventually explodes. 
it sparked discussion and it's tasteless and I, and I think that um, they should be ready for that kind of a pushback. But look, you know, th th there are, by the way, video games that depict all kinds of pretty, um, you know, aggressive acts and violent acts uh, from time to time. But um, uh, I think that angle of the David Suzuki Foundation actually collecting um, uh, a financial benefit from those who, uh, who want to play games that depict violence against people who work in our natural resource sector, um, I think it probably goes a little bit too far. TV Ontario has since removed the game from its website and has hired two independent invi uh, individuals rather, to review the game. <laughs> Meanwhile, lawyers for the province have concluded their cross-examination of company experts at the hearings into the proposed Northern Gateway pipeline, and they say they still have questions. Environment Minister Terry Lake says the province needs more information on how pipeline proponents would deliver the world-class oil spill prevention and response promised as part of the $6 billion project. Tonight is the night. Canadians will join more than 1 billion people around the world by turning off the lights. Starting at 8.30 local time this evening, Canadians are encouraged to turn the lights off for Earth Hour. The annual event that draws attention to climate change began back in 2007. Last year, an estimated 1.8 billion people in 152 countries took part in the hour. If you're planning to lose the lights tonight, you can see just how much of a difference you're making uh, by going online. BC Hydro has a tool that allows you to compare your electricity use during Earth Hour with your normal power usage. That uh, tool can be found at bchydro.com. If you don't have any plans tomorrow, if you're looking to get out of your plans, uh, we might have the answer you're looking for. It was the most ridiculous thing I've ever done, but it was a lot of fun. It's really hard to stand up. Fell down a lot, but. These massive floating hamster balls are quickly becoming a hit at the Vancouver Island Outdoor Adventure Expo. Also popular, the mechanical bull, complete with real horns. The expo has taken over the Perks Recreation Center this weekend with every toy imaginable on land as well as on water. It looked like a challenge. It was, you know, trying to roll around in some water in the ball, it's kind of hard. Once you get used to it though, you, you find out how you gotta do it. And hands up and start running. Um, probably balancing is the most difficult part. And it's a lot of work just to get enough momentum going to, to move the ball as well. The Expo's final day is tomorrow from 10 to 5. There is a small fee. Uh, if you'd like more details, you can go to ifmevents.com. Welcome back. Some sad news to report tonight. Pamela Anderson's great aunt, who has also become Vancouver Island's great aunt, Auntie Vi, has died. Aunt Vi was brought into the media spotlight by her great niece, Pamela Anderson. She was, without a doubt, Pamela's biggest supporter on Dancing with the Stars. Our Adam Sawatsky spent a great deal of time with Aunt Vi and says she not only captured imaginations, but inspired people. She even wrote a book. It was half memoir, half uh, cookbook called Pickles and Pearls. She wrote it with her neighbor. She said, when I pass from this earth, I'm strapping on my dancing shoes and I'm gonna dance my way to heaven. And she said, just look up at the stars because every star that you see will be a toe tap for me, lighting them up, dancing. Let me just leave you with some advice from our Auntie Vi. She said, put some spring in your step and glitz in your life and don't look back. Bye bye Auntie Vi, we love you. Today, Pamela Anderson sent out a tweet saying, Rest in peace, my sweet, dear, great Auntie Vi. A beautiful example to all women, soft, sparkly, and happy. Finally, tonight, uh, CTV Vancouver Island is going international all the way to Los Angeles, where hundreds of Canadians and at least a few Vancouver Islanders went today to cheer on the Vancouver Canucks. And perhaps the loudest fan of them all was our very own CTV's Jeff Bassey, who joins us now from the Staples Center. Jet. Well, Joe, we're here in Los Angeles in front of the Staples Center where the Vancouver Canucks took on the defending champions, the LA Kings. Back in Phoenix, the Canucks won 2-1, Tanev and Schroeder with the goals, and they're trying to bring that momentum into LA. But with them, they also brought a ton of support. Go Canucks! Go Canucks! Go. I can't stand it. It's not that attractive. Yes, I hate them. <laughs> yes, these Kings fans are talking about these guys. Go Canucks, go! I can't stand all these Canucks. Whenever the Canucks come into Tinseltown, drones of Canucks fans follow, migrating south like Canada geese. We were in Phoenix for the game there, 
and we won that one, so uh, we're hoping to win this one, but we're just going to have a good time. For some, it's a ritual heading south to beat BC's wet weather when their favorite team hits the ice in L.A. At least 25 degrees hotter than it is in Vancouver, and uh, I can wear shorts and sandals to a hockey game. Nanaimo's Josh Kang made the trip down. He's here to cheer on his team and soak up some sun. Uh, you know, ticket prices are so expensive over there, and the atmosphere just isn't as good, so thought we'd try something new. He was surprised to see such a strong Canucks following in La La Land. Yeah, it's good to have so much support here. We weren't sure what to expect, but looks like we should have a good following tonight. Last season, the Kings knocked the Canucks out of the playoffs, something the LA Kings fans keep reminding them. But it's no big deal for these fans. It's like water off a can of Goose's back. Big deal. We're getting way more props from the Canuck fans, and there's lots of them here. You know, you sit next to a blue jersey with a black jersey, you know, at first you hate each other, but at the end of the game, you kind of like each other. It's Canada's game, and Canuckers will follow their team into the most hostile of territories, even if they're not invited. Jeff Bassey, CTV News, Los Angeles.